Hello New Game fans, E3 2021 did surprise us with a number of fantastic pixel art titles, some of which I've covered in my previous videos, so check out this playlist if you're curious about those. There are a couple more events left to cover, including the PC gaming show, which is severely underrated, but I've picked out the remainder of the pixel art titles that I have my eye on. Disciples of Warlock With their guns And their spells And their grit Ready for plenty of hurt Ready to cleanse the world Invaded by demons Let's begin with the retro FPS Project Warlock 2 the sequel to one of the most impressive games from 2018 since it's from a developer who is really young, who I believe is just 22 this year, where the first game was influenced by classics like Doom and Wolfenstein, which is interesting since this developer was not even born when those games were released. He's back with the sequel, which looks to be bigger and better, although it isn't pure pixel art, but given how great the first game was, this gets a spot. We did also get a showcase from Chinese publisher Eureka Studios as well, where one of their pixel art titles of interest is Metal Mind, an action roguelite with some sick mechs looking to be a promising upcoming title. As with all mech games, the customization of your mech is the most important part, where there appears to be a variety of legs, weapons and chassis to use, all wrapped up with the familiar action roguelite elements. The closest equivalent that I can think of is Nero Voider from the developer of Scourge Bringer, so there's something to whet your appetite while waiting for this. One thing to note is that based on some information that I gathered, the action does seem to be a little slower and more plodding than other roguelites, so make of that what you will, but perhaps that's fitting for a mech game depending on the type of mechs that you like in your fiction. I'm a little late to the party since Sacrifier is currently on Kickstarter with about 2 days to go as of recording, but they don't need my help, already blowing past their target goal. However, it's a pixel art JRPG inspired by Vagrant Story and Xenogears from Polish developer Pixelated Milk who make the tactical RPG Regalia of Men and Monarchs as well as the darkest dungeon like Warsaw, so of course I'm in. Like many modern JRPGs, this does have 2D sprites in 3D environments, which as noted before, appears to be the way forward, so check out the campaign page for stretch goals and rewards. Rupert. What's the deal? We're at a crossroads. I'm one test away from being accepted into the Lupercalia. Well, that sounds like good news. What's the test? They want me to steal the 16th century edition of the Divine Comedy from the Tomasek University's Rare Books Library. Well, that escalated quickly. I mean, I sort of get it. If you're going to set up tests for initiates, you might as well go all the way. Steal the Divine Comedy. Genius! I'm really taking a shine to these guys. A gorgeous pixel art title that I have my eye on is Chinatown Detective Agency. Since it's set in a cyber noir future of 2032 in my home country of Singapore, and as a globe trotting adventure in the vein of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Sometimes I wonder what I'm getting myself into. I thought being a PI was pretty straightforward. Take a few photos of a cheating husband, catch the bad guy using company funds. You ought to be excited. I know I am. But I'm serious. I can only compromise my morals so many times. Play as an ex-Interpol agent turned private investigator, 
opening up shop in Singapore's Chinatown, where a new case takes our heroine down a rabbit hole of conspiracies and plots that threatens the nation itself. You just needed to hear me say, do it. And I'm saying, do it. We're about to go past the point of no return. Some of the pixel art renditions thrown off here in the trailer are extremely impressive, from the Singapore skyline to a Blade Runner looking depiction of Japan, and even an interpretation of the classic painting The School of Athens, so good stuff all around and should release this summer. In a future of endless futile war, desertion into hostile syndicate territory was your only option. In this open world RPG, from the jungle to the streets. A very impressive tactical RPG is Mecha Jammer, looking to be influenced by games like Syndicate and Satellite Rain, set in a self described grindhouse jungle colony, and looks really good. You might just find a way off this planet. Mecha Jammer. A long and development title did make an appearance as well with Star Mensa, a base building colony sim where you control the AI of a space station, having to keep the humans alive as long as possible by obeying protocol, or you can go rogue and cause as much mayhem as possible. On top of having to provide adequate facilities, food and water, there are adversaries like space zombies and pirates, where if things go south, you can always regrow more humans, and will feel familiar to fans of games like RimWorld, but the best part is that it actually got the date and will be releasing in early access next month. I mentioned the Indonesian action-adventure title Anuchad a little while back, but we did get an extended look at this, promising the expected combat, puzzles, and even a home base to upgrade as you save more villagers. A number of games have signed with a relatively new publisher named Freedom Games, who is also somehow tied to the Freedom MCN on YouTube, which does not have the best reputation, but they do seem to be doing right by their developers, at least for now, so I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. The long in development monster taming RPG, Koromon did also get a new trailer, where fans of the channel will be familiar with this, since it is one of my most anticipated in the games. It's the what if scenario if Pokemon decided to stick with pixel art rather than go in the 3D direction, where some of the monster designs are pretty impressive. As a fan of the classic turn-based RPG, this has my attention, with the vibrant world and pixel art being one of the draws. The final Freedom Games published title on the list is the sci-fi farming sim One Lonely Outpost, one that was last seen in my video covering upcoming games like Stardew Valley, which did get a new trailer that showed off more of the systems and pixel art. As a colonist on an alien planet, you need to build up a self-sustaining colony, starting off all alone but gradually attracting other colonists to the planet, where the sci-fi slant is of particular interest to me.
you have the choice of growing things the traditional, naturalist way, or to go the synth cork roots with the robo cows and genetically modified crops, but this does also show off combat elements and dungeon exploration, making it another title to look forward to. The final long and development title that resurfaced once again is Songs of Conquest, making an impact during the PC gaming show a couple of years back where it was the natural stage to be shown off once again. This is a Heroes of Might and Magic like, a series which I hold near and dear to my heart, where unfortunately, the IP currently sits within Ubisoft of all people but indie developers to the rescue. I do hope that this game will breathe new life into a forgotten genre, and it would please me to no end should that happen, plus it does look fantastic, taking the number one spot. For more gorgeous upcoming pixel art titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.